Masters Art Science and Commerce College Gokak who is welcoming you to the part 2 of the plant tissue culture. In this presentation, we will be discussing about the different applications of plant tissue culture and also we will be studying about the process of morphogenesis. In early 50s, it was observed that plant cells are amenable to chemical manipulations in the medium whereby they can be induced to form organized structures and complete plants. This discovery is considered to be very important for the application of cell and tissue culture methods to overcome several problems connected with agriculture, horticulture and plant breeding. The first application of plant tissue culture is the plant tissue culture technique provides a way for rapid multiplication of desirable and rare plants. Now here in the image you can see just by a small piece of the rhizome of ginger plant it is been able to produce large number of the clones of the same ginger plant through the technique of tissue culture. Now for example 20,000 plants per year per bud can be produced from turmeric and one like plants per year per bud can be produced in eucalyptus. Through tissue culture we can produce natural resistant varieties. As the experiment reveals, virus infected plants also contain some healthy stocks. That is, these plants are resistant to that particular disease. It means that if we take the explant of such plants and culture it through tissue culture and produce large number of plants, then all these plants are naturally resistant varieties. And through this technique, it has been successful in obtaining the disease variety plants in cases of the strawberries and sugarcane. Through plant tissue culture, we can also produce haploid plants that is through anther culture. Now here you can see, you can just take uh, anther from the stamens and then culture it and you're going to get a plant and this plant is haploid because it contains a single genome. Now this single genome plant helps us to know which genes are in, uh, are in the dominant stage and which genes are in recessive stage. And thus, it plays a significant role in the basic and applied genetics and also in plant breeding. During the past 20 years, the technique has been successfully extended to about 20 plant species, including some economic plants. Now tissue culture also helps in producing plants through embryo culture and culturing the plants through embryo culture is helping us to overcome the seed dormancy. It is also utilized for producing viable plants from crosses which normally fail due to death of immature embryos. Now here in embryo culture what we do is we just take uh, the embryo of that plant culture it through the nutritive medium and produce large number of plants. So thus, these embryos, which in normal cases, in natural conditions, may or may not produce a plant. But through tissue culture technique, it is possible 
to produce the plants and also it helps us to overcome the seed dormancy and these experiments were successful in case of the jute and rice the embryo tissue culture is also applied for propagation of rare plants in some experiments coconut develop soft solid fatty tissue in place of liquid endosperm this was first noted by mohan ram in the year 1976 now here you can see this is a coconut now actually this is a region where the liquid endosperm should be there but instead of the liquid endosperm here there is a presence of soft solid and fatty tissues these coconuts are called makapuno coconuts these are very expensive and rare they are served only at special banquet in philippines and under normal conditions these coconut seeds fail to germinate but using the embryo culture technique we can produce large number of these uh, makapuno coconuts through tissue culture another important application of the embryo culture is found in obtaining some rare hybrids now here you can see these are the three varieties of uh, banana plants actually from a single banana plant you get only a single bunch of fruit but here in this extreme left variety you can see a single banana plant is producing three bunches of fruitlets thereby increasing the yield now in this uh, image which is present in the middle you can see the inflorescence axis is growing uncontrolled thereby producing innumerable number of fruits and in the extreme right you can see this is a rare hybrid which we call it as a red banana and all these can be propagated in large quantities and in large numbers only through tissue culture technique because through natural propagations it is very difficult to produce their number another important use of embryo culture is found in obtaining some rare hybrids also in this uh, tomato plants papaya plants and cotton plants now it is possible to isolate and culture a single cell of plant and this single cell culture helps in mutant selection in relation to crop improvement as done in tobacco and datura the technique is also useful in production of some chemical substances in the industry in some cases cell culture contain 20 times more chemical content than the normal cells recently tissue culture is used in protoplast culture of different varieties of plants and these protoplast are used for somatic hybridization and through this somatic hybridization it is possible to produce many rare hybrids now here you can see how the somatic now this is the image showing you how the somatic hybridization technique is done in tissue culture and here you can see these three varieties of uh, hybrids of citrus fruits now this is a triploid mandarin hybrid this is a triploid lime hybrid and this is a triploid lemon hybrid and here you can see these are the varieties of flowering plants which are obtained through somatic hybridization tissue culture can also be used to preserve germplasm that is tissue conservation of older variety plants because high performance of crop varieties has been widely adopted and this has resulted in 
the disappearance of large number of older varieties. The forest which house the wild races of most of the crops are being cut down on large scales. Hence, tissue culture can be used to preserve germplasm, that is, tissue conservation of these plants can be done identically. So these are the different applications of uh, tissue culture in crop improvement. Now let us study morphogenesis. Morphogenesis is a process through which an embryo undergoes development and results in formation of an organism. That is all the different organ systems are produced. So this whole process we call it as morphogenesis in general. But in tissue culture, morphogenesis means development of organs through the callus tissue. Now there are two types of uh, morphogenesis. In one type of morphogenesis, the callus directly gives rise to the organ systems in plants. That is, the callus undergoes morphogenesis to give rise to the shoot system and the root system, thus producing the whole plant. The another type is the callus gives rise to embryos and these embryos have got the shoot uh, pole and the root pole and these give rise to the root system and the shoot system. So the first part we call it as organogenesis and the second part we call it as embryogenesis. Now before understanding all this concept, let us get used to certain terminologies because these are usually asked for short answers. Now first, what do you mean by totipotency? It is the inherent potentiality of a plant cell to give rise to a whole plant. This is a capacity which is retained even after the cell has undergone final differentiation in the plant body. In plants, even highly matured and differentiated cells retain the ability to regenerate to the meristematic state as long as they have intact membrane systems. But such totipotency capacity is not seen in animal cells. Now here in this image you can see, now actually these are all the differentiated cells of carrot. Now if you take these differentiated cells of the callus and grow it into a nutritive medium, these differentiated cells can regain the power of meristematic activities and then each cell then behaves as a potential embryo and gives rise to a whole plant. So this ability of a cell to generate into a plant body, we call this potential as totipotency. Differentiation. Now, once the cells are produced. These cells are going to later produce into different permanent tissues and the fate of the cells to form undifferentiated cells that is the permanent cells. This process we call it as differentiation that is the meristematic cells undergo differentiation to give rise to permanent tissues. Now here you can see the undifferentiated cells at the tip region giving rise to the different ground tissue 
the cortex, the endodermis, and the epidermis of the shoot system. Then here, the meristematic tissue undergo differentiation to give rise to all the permanent tissues of the root system. So the process by which a meristematic cell gives rise to the different permanent tissues in plant, that process we call it as differentiation. De-differentiation. De-differentiation is a process in which the differentiated cell reacquires the power of meristematic activities. Now here you can see these are all the permanent cells in a leaf tissue. Now if these are kept in media containing certain hormones, now here the cells, the permanent cells start multiplying and become meristematic. So the process by which a permanent cell becomes meristematic and behaves like a meristematic tissue, that we call it as de-differentiation. Redifferentiation means the meristematic tissues obtained from permanent cells and then they undergo differentiation to give rise to the different permanent tissues of the plant that process we call it as redifferentiation now here you see these are the meristematic cells here produced from permanent tissues through redifferentiation then these redifferentiated cells again undergo differentiation so this process we call it as redifferentiation so now we shall see about morphogenesis it is a biological process as i have told you earlier through which differentiation of cells tissues and development of organs occur resulting in shaping of an organism according to the genetic blueprint of the potential organism and environmental condition but in tissue culture, morphogenesis means it is a process through which the callus undergoes redifferentiation to produce a plantlet in vitro. Now there are two forms of morphogenesis in tissue culture techniques. One is organogenesis and the second is embryogenesis. So first let us study organogenesis. Organogenesis means here you see this is a callus tissue. Now this callus tissue directly develops into the different organ systems of the plant. That is the callus is giving rise to the shoot system and the root system. So if a callus directly gives rise to the different organs of the plant body, then this we call it as organogenesis. Embryogenesis means here what happens is the callus that is produced, this callus produces numerous embryos and these embryos have got the shoot apex and the root apex. The shoot apex gives rise to the shoot system and the root apex gives rise to the root system. So here the callus first gives rise to embryos and then the embryos then gives rise to a whole plant. So this process we call it as embryogenesis. In plant tissue culture, organogenesis means genesis of organs like root, shoot, leaves, flowers, etc. The earliest report of induction of shoot organogenesis in vitro was done by White using the tobacco hybrid. And the first observation of root formation was reported by Nobeck Court in the year 1939. Skoog and Miller were responsible to recognize a balance between 
auxins and cytokinin which is responsible for the shoot and root formation. As per their finding, a relative high level of auxin to cytokinin favors root formation and the reverse favors shoot formation. So now, using this concept, it has become possible to achieve organogenesis in large number of plant species by culturing explants in defined medium. Now the genesis of the shoot from the explant or the callus is termed as collogenesis and the genesis of the root from the explant or callus is termed as rhizogenesis. Now let us see the pathway of organogenesis. This is schematically represented as follows. Now in tissue culture we take the explant, we put this explant in a nutritive medium and this explant produces callus. Callus is an undifferentiated mass of parenchyma cells. So this process we call it as dedifferentiation means the permanent cells of the explant have got converted into meristematic cells. So this process we call it as dedifferentiation. Then the callus gives rise to organs. So the formation of organs from the callus we call this process as redifferentiation. And this organogenesis occurs in two ways. That is, I have told you, if the callus gives rise to the root system, we call it as rhizogenesis. And if it gives rise to the shoot system, we call it as collogenesis. Now let us see first rhizogenesis. So the organogenesis first results in formation means it undergoes the process of rhizogenesis. Rhizogenesis leads to the formation of roots and but here the shoot formation doesn't take place hence no plants can be produced here. But if collogenesis occurs then it results in formation of the shoot system. Now to this shoot system we can induce root system formation by altering the auxin and cytokinin ratio and then a whole plant can be produced. So this technique is used in tissue culture. That is first what we do here is we take the explant from the explant we produce this callus. The callus then gives rise to the shoot system to collogenesis and then we induce the root system in this shoot system plant and then the whole plant is produced. So this we call it as organogenesis. Now embryogenesis. Embryogenesis means it is a process of development of embryo from the zygote. An embryo is defined as a plant in its initial stage of development. And embryo possesses two poles the plumule and the radical. The plumule gives rise to the shoot system and the radical gives rise to the shoot system, sorry, root system. Now here you can see this is an em embryo. Now this is the plumule which will give rise to the shoot system and this is the radical part which gives rise to the root system. Apart from the normal course of embryo formation, Zygotic embryogenesis and adventitious embryony instances of embryo formation from tissue culture has been reported. This phenomenon is termed as the somatic embryogenesis and this was first observed by Stewart and his co-worker in suspension culture of carrot. Since then, a number of reports of embryo formation has been published. Patterns of embryogenesis. 
there are two patterns of embryogenesis in vitro one is direct and second is indirect in a direct embryogenesis the embryos are directly originated from the cultured cells that gives rise to embryos and the embryo then gives rise to the whole plant in indirect embryogenesis the origin of embryos takes place through callus stage that is the explant will give rise to the callus the callus tissue then gives rise to the embryos and then the embryos then gives rise to the whole plant now this i can explain to you with this example now here you can see this is the explant the explant when it is grown in a culture medium it directly gives rise to embryos here there is no callus formation now each cell here you can see is a potential embryo and these embryos they have as i've told you they have got uh, two poles the plumule which gives rise to the shoot and the radical which gives rise to the root and then it results in formation of a whole plant so this we call it as direct embryogenesis where the explant directly gives rise to the embryos and embryos then develop into the plants in indirect embryogenesis here you can see a uh, explant is taken it is kept in the culture medium then in the culture medium it results in formation of callus tissue first then each of these callus tissues then gives rise to these embryos then these embryos then develop into the root and shoot system and then gives rise to the whole plant so here the embryos are arising from the callus and not directly from the explant hence we call this type of embryogenesis as indirect embryogenesis so with this we complete this part 2 of the plant tissue culture so thank you for your time take care and be safe